Hello, my name is April and welcome to the Yoga Ranger Studio and welcome to your practice today. A lot of things in our lives require courage. And I don't mean the kind of courage that requires you to do something really heroic, but I mean daily heroics. Courage sometimes to get up in the morning, courage to face your day, courage to explore self through meditation and yoga practice, Courage to stand tall for the things you believe in and stand firm. Courage to surrender and let go and forgive. So courage is in everything that we do throughout our day. And sometimes your courage can feel like it's a little under the weather. And I know exactly how that feels. In traditional Chinese medicine, when we look at courage, we look at fear and fearlessness and the balance between fear, which is there's healthy fear that helps you stay alive. It's important, right? And then there's overwhelming fear that paralyzes you. And the opposition to that is courage. Courage can be courage that helps you get through your day and those, all the issues that I kind of covered, or courage that exceeds itself and becomes more of an overwhelming, you believe everything can work out fine. You have no fear. You are utterly fearless. And remember, fear helps you stay alive. So there's a balance, once again, between yin and yang here in our traditional Chinese medicine practice. So we'll be working today with the kidney meridian specifically. This is where an imbalance can take us one way or the other. And we want to find that middle ground where fear keeps us alive, but courage just allows us to be the strong person that we are dealing with all those different things that come into our lives. So just a couple of things that you might need today for your practice. I always suggest a blanket underneath for your comfort. And we have a couple of poses that this might really be helpful. And I'm sitting on a second blanket or beach towel. You can use that to give you a little bit of propage and a little bit of lift for some of our poses. So go ahead and sit up nice and tall starting here. And I like to sit on the edge of the blanket to give me a natural pelvic tilt. So if you're someone who has kind of tight hamstrings like myself, you'll find that that blanket gives you a little bit of help here. So starting in butterfly position, bring the bottoms of the feet together. And because we're working with the kidney meridians, which run inside the leg and up into the abdomen, we wanna pull those feet a little bit closer. So not so far away, a little bit closer, a little bit closer, probably as close as you can probably get them. Sit up nice and tall. And then when you feel ready, go ahead and fold yourself forward. Now you might find because the legs are so close in that you don't have a lot of room to fold deeply and that's okay. We're not looking for a deep fold. Don't pull on your toes and try to get yourself a little deeper. This is not a yang class and yin we, we let things happen. Remember, it takes courage to let things go, to surrender to the pose and to the practice. Settle into your breath. Settle into your breath here a little deeper. Got about another minute here. Maybe setting your intention for your practice being allowing yourself to explore courage in different ways. Courage as heroics, but also courage as surrender, forgiveness, exploration, Feeling the muscles release.
One more deep inhale and exhale. Slowly pressing yourself back up, bringing the feet flat, leaning back a little bit, just windshield wipering those knees side to side. Sometimes it feels good after being really still to have a little motion. Our next pose, we're gonna be coming down into Tipsy Frog. One of lots of people's favorite pose. Bring that blanket out in front of us. Now, depending on your comfort, you can take those under your arms for your Sphinx pose and starting in our Sphinx pose. So if this is too much for your back, just come straight down without the blanket underneath. This gives a little bit more back bend. And then go ahead and start to bring that right knee out to the right. Kind of get it in line with the hip, the foot flexed a little bit. Now your hips are not gonna be level because your knee is out to the side, so don't worry too much about that. Just let it kind of hang out. But let the shoulder soften, so you have a little back bend along with that inner leg kidney meridian. Just a few more breaths here on this side. Gently start to bring that heel into the center. Shift over just a little bit, take that leg straight back behind you. Just Sphinx pose here for a few breaths, letting those shoulders soften, the belly come forward and down. If you feel some pinching, you can always take that leg down lower instead of having the knee right level with the hips. Switching to our second sign, leaning a little bit over to our right, this time taking that left knee out, either in line with the hip or a little bit below it. Ankle in line with the knee, toes a little bit flexed and just let them kind of softly rest on the floor. Breathing into that space. Letting the floor press against the inner leg, helping put a little bit of stimulation and pressure on that inner kidney meridian on the left side. Nice deep breaths, letting the shoulder soften, the belly come forward and down. Maybe the head lifts a little bit, or if you want to, you can drop your chin down a little bit, just like you would in Sphinx pose.
Last few breaths here. I truly think yin is one of those things that builds a lot of sensitivity to courage. Because being quiet and still takes a lot of courage. It can be hard not to want to move and to be alone and quiet with your thoughts and with your body. So for me, it's a practice of courage every time. And the courage to let go of expectations as well. So go ahead and start to bring that left heel inwards, lean over a little bit to the right, come back into our Sphinx pose just for a couple of breaths. Coming down, hands on top of one another, rest your forehead on the back of your hands. slowly coming back up. We're going to bring that blanket right down the middle. Give us a little padding underneath our knees. So without dragon pose, there is no courage, right? So take that right foot out in front of you. We're going to take wing dragon. So walking that right foot over to the right, coming onto the outside edge of the foot, palms down, or you can come up on fingertips. If the floor is really far away, it's so much better to Bring the floor closer with blocks if you have them, but if you don't, fingertips work just as well. And you'll find that over time, you might be able to bring the palms down. I have kind of short arms, so that gets challenging, but. Now lifting that back foot up, dragging that knee towards you as you come back down, so you're on the top side of the knee, not just the kneecap. Just one more minute here. Start to lift back up, bring that foot flat, rock back, step back to downward facing dog. A nice loose downward facing dog. Walk the legs out if that feels good, just shift the hips side to side. And coming back down onto your knees, you're gonna switch sides. So we're gonna take that left leg over to the left, 
walk your hands down. You're going to turn that foot out just a little bit and roll into the outside edge if that's available to you. Here again, shifting that back leg back, pulling the knee forward, fingertips or palms. This side starting with fingertips for me. Last minute here. Start to come up on the fingertips. Bring that foot flat and make your way back into downward facing dog again here, walking the legs out, rocking hips side to side if that feels good for you. Go ahead and come all the way down. Take that blanket off to the side. I'm going to turn yourself around. We're going to come to a variation of child's pose. So keeping that right left foot underneath the left hip, right foot out to the right. Have a little bit of a 90 degree angle here and start to kind of fold forward. Now if you feel a little pinching here, you can stick the finger between the hip point where your fold is and give yourself a little space and pull that hand out and come down to wherever you feel comfortable. The inside skate edge of your right foot is on the floor. If you have more mobility and you want to take the foot a little flatter, you can, but don't force it. Just kind of let it happen. As gravity pulls you down, just feel a little lengthening in your spine, the softening of the muscles. Focusing on your inhale and exhale, extending that exhale, allowing everything to just release.
just one more minute here. Slowly start to make your way back up. Gently bring that right foot in. Take a couple of breaths here to sit in hero pose or whatever pose makes sense for you. I always like to bring everything back to the middle once I've stretched out to this side. my partner in crime. So go ahead and sit back on that right side. Take that left leg out to the side here again, making that 90 degree angle however you can here. And then slowly shifting forward so that the inside of that left foot falls down, maybe opening it out so a little bit more so you get a little bit more. So if you have it just on the inside edge, you'll feel some on the inside of the leg but you can start to turn it out a little bit, very gently let gravity kind of pull the foot down and out. Find a little bit more. Just about one more minute here. Gently start to make your way back up. Slowly and mindfully bring that leg back in. Sit back however you want. Whenever working with kidneys, I feel a lot of shifts in energy. It's, to me, one of the more powerful practices. Probably that's why it has to do with fear and courage, right? So go ahead and come down onto your back. I'm gonna take our twists here. So arms out to the side. You can bend the elbows or keep the arms straight. 
You're just gonna walk your feet super wide, as wide as your mat, and just rock your knees side to side a couple of times. This is windshield wiper twist. So we're gonna drop those knees over to the left once we get back over the left side. This is gonna bring a little opening to the inside of the leg as well. You can turn and look over your right shoulder or look straight up. Just let gravity do what gravity does best. Last few breaths here. Turn your head back to center. Inhale, come all the way up. Bring those knees together for a couple of breaths. And when you feel ready, go ahead and drop those knees, this time over to the right, letting them fall where they may, turning, looking over your left shoulder this time, or straight up. Just a few more deep breaths. Start to turn your head back to center. Bring those knees all the way up. Knees together, hands to your belly. Here, take some nice deep breaths. Knowing that you have faced the dragon in yin and survived. That you have worked with silence and the courage to face silence and stillness, which is a lot of courage. And remain here for Shavasana. You can take your heels out to the corners of the mat Tuck the shoulder blades underneath wherever you are staying. You can take the hands out to the side, palms up, or you can take one hand to your belly, one hand to your heart.
Feel the balance of courage and fear. That fear that keeps us alive and keeps us on our toes and aware. And that courage that helps us face every single day. And I know for many people, waking up and just getting up in the morning can be an act of courage. Take heart. There is balance here that can be had. Settling into your breath. Letting that exhale extend longer and longer and longer. It takes courage. It takes strength to be firm. It takes courage to be gentle. It takes strength to conquer. It takes courage to surrender. It takes strength to be certain. It takes courage to have doubt. It takes strength to fit in. It takes courage to stand out. It takes strength to feel a friend's pain. It takes courage to feel your own pain. It takes strength to endure abuse, and it takes courage to stop it. It takes strength to stand alone. It takes courage to lean on someone else. It takes strength to love. It takes courage to be loved. It takes strength to survive. It takes courage to live. Gently start to wiggle your fingers and your toes, bringing a little bit more awareness to the body. Filling your lungs all the way up with a nice deep inhale. Exhaling through your mouth. On your next inhale, taking your arms up overhead and stretching through your fingertips, stretching through your toes. And gently exhaling over to your right side. After a few breaths, slowly making your way up into whatever seat is most appropriate for you. Palms up on your knees or in your lap, shoulders roll down your back, core lifted and lengthened. On an exhale, drop those fingertips down to the floor. Inhale, sweep the hands all the way up. Open your eyes, look up at your palms. Exhale, hands to heart. Peace and namaste. I hope you enjoyed this practice. Thank you so much for joining me today. I wish you much courage and fearlessness and boldness in whatever you have going on in your life, even if it's simply to just get out of bed, go on through your day, whatever you have coming up. Use this practice as a way to settle in and know that you faced the dragon. There is a dragon here and you face that quiet. And that takes a lot of strength to be quiet, to be settled, to be still, to surrender. There's a lot of courage there. If you enjoyed this practice, please like and comment down below. And if you are not a subscriber, click that subscribe button over to your right hand side and join me each Thursday morning for a brand new practice. If you would like to see practices like this and much, much more longer practices and more extensive practices, you can check out my member site at theyogaranger.vhx.tv. There's a link up above and down below. Free seven day trial to check out and see what there is there for you. Would love to have you join me there. But if not, would love to see you here again on YouTube for another practice. Have a great day.